radiation crystal can be turned into energy block after purification. Non-elemental pure energy, although it says these are of high concentration, these should be of the low tier in the standard of the universe. There were many types of energy, magnetic, electrical, nuclear, light, planet, antimatter, dark, psionic, and many more. If these were psionic energy blocks, they would be as valuable as the entire planet aquamarine. There were also 300 pounds of dark blue crystals with higher concentration. Han Zio guessed that it was the feces of the Beast King. The Beast King owned the most amount of high energy waste, so it produced crystals with the highest concentration compared to the others. It could barely be considered middle tier concentration. The purification rate would be much higher, and they should be able to produce 10 pounds of energy blocks with higher ona. 300 pounds. This guy really can take SHTS. It should take about half a day to extract everything. I shall just wait. Han Zio patted his hands. All that was left were the carcasses and eggs in the frozen warehouses. These could be used to make drugs, but he was not a pharmacist. Han Zio pondered for a while and decided to hire a pharmacist. Suddenly, he had a flash of insight, and a name buried deep in his memories appeared in his mind. A secret meeting was being held in the headquarters of Division 13, and many important members of the Hesla Military Intelligence Department were present. Gu Hui had welcomed them himself. In the meeting room, both parties were calmly discussing the expedition. Buzz. The entire place turned silent upon the sound of phone vibration. The expressions on Hesla people's faces looked like they were saying, Is this your leader? So unprofessional. Gu Hui frowned. He had many phones, and most of them were turned off during meetings except for the one for emergency matters. Only very important calls would go to this phone. However, once he took out the phone and saw the number, his pupils constricted. Pause the meeting. I have to take this call. Surprised, Han Zio's mocking voice came out of the phone. Han Zio used the number and identity of Zero to call Gu Hui. Since the intelligence he provided last time, he had become a very important focus target of Star Dragon. I want a person. Who? She's called. Wait, let me go through the wanted list. Her code is Emerald Grass, she's a pharmacist. Gu Huey was stunned for a moment. Emerald Grass, her superhuman ability was controlling plants, and she was a top-notch pharmacist. Once, she had spread an infectious lethal disease with a drug that was not experimented on and caused a large number of deaths, which lead to her wanted status. She had been captured a few years ago and was currently tightly imprisoned on Bell of Death Island. Gu Huey contemplated and said, Even I can't bail people out of Bell of Death Island casually. It's against the rules. This was a roundabout rejection. Han Zio laughed. He suddenly changed the subject and said, I heard the expedition is going to start very soon. Tsk tsk. Six nations coming together for a battle, attacking the land of Andrea from more than a dozen directions, with planes, aircraft carriers, and all sorts. Tell me, will the Germanal organization accept their fate without resistance? Gu Hui's hand tightened on the phone. What intelligence do you have? Plenty. Base locations, military power, missile layout, and the Germanal organization's various inhuman plans. Han Zio said in a very tempting tone. Gu Hui was angry, but he had to fall for the trap. Emerald grass is yours. Done. Han Zio agreed without hesitation. He had already planned on giving every piece of intelligence he had on the germinal organization before the war to give more advantages to the six nations anyway. And now, he could even use that to exchange for a very important person. In version 2.0 of his previous life, Emerald grass had been a very important character in Planet Aquamarine. As a top-notch pharmacist, she researched on the mutation virus, created drugs that suppress the virus effectively. The intelligence will be sent to you. I will decide the location to retrieve emerald grass, Han Zio said then hung up the call. Thu Huey's expression changed several times. Only Han Zio dared to hang up on him casually, and he could not do anything about it. A prisoner in exchange for key intelligence, this deal was a definite win. If I can get emerald grass this time. Not only can she help to research on drugs, I can even make Sanctuary 3 be the first place that suppresses the mutation virus in version 2.0. The Sanctuary has my name in it. The safer it is, the more influential I become. However, Star Dragon will know they exchanged Emerald Grass with me. They won't give up this investigation chance, and if they find out that Emerald Grass works here, they might guess I'm Black Phantom, and my identity will be exposed. While evaluating the risks and benefits, Han Zio suddenly realized something. He had kept his identity hidden at the start because he had been too weak. But now, with Darknet backing him up and his strength being at the top of the planet, there was no need to hide from the enemy anymore. 
At the same time, the germinal organization was facing its destruction and could not even take care of themselves. Hiding his identity did not matter anymore. He suddenly felt delighted. Without him noticing it, his archenemy was not gigantic in his eyes anymore. He had grown to be able to face the strongest organization on the planet. From another perspective, exposing his identity could combine the influence of Zero and Black Phantom and cause a chemical reaction, and he was 80% sure that he would get legendary points. The player's impression of him would also increase to another level. Stars filled the sky. On the Star Dragon border, a black heavy helicopter landed slowly, its rotors blowing the weeds in all directions. A few Star Dragon Special Force soldiers lugged a person by their arms down from the chopper with serious expressions on their faces. This person was wearing a metal eye patch and a bandage. She had dry, messy hair that had not been taken care of for a very long time, and her lips were pale and cracked. The bottom half of the face showed it was a female. Sir, she's here. The special unit soldier saluted the officer who was waiting on the side. Confirm her body status, make sure she doesn't wake up, Feng Jun said. He was in charge of this exchange. Don't worry, the doctor said, I injected a large dose of tranquilizer into her. She's in a deep sleep now. Confirm it again. Feng Jun looked down at his watch. The agreed time of exchange was nearing, so he was nervous. Whoosh. It was the sound of rotors cutting through the air. Feng Jun regained focus and looked up. A helicopter approached from the night sky. The indicator lights flashed in the code pattern, and Feng Jun immediately told someone to reply. After exchanging the signals, Feng Jun gave a quick scan but did not find any organization's symbol on the chopper. However, although it was unknown, Feng Jun could see that Han Zio had joined another organization. He felt heavy-hearted. Where's the person? A man in mask hopped down from the chopper. Feng Jun waved his hands, and the team behind him brought emerald grass forward. The masked man opened a laptop and confirmed it was the right person before carrying emerald grass onto the chopper. The helicopter took off immediately after. The entire process took little more than a minute. Feng Jun did not have a chance to communicate. He could only watch the helicopter fly away helplessly. Feng Jun took out his phone and called Gu Hui to report the process. He did join another organization after all, and it's because this organization hid him that we were not able to find him. Gu Hui pondered. What organization could it be? On the helicopter, the masked man unlocked Emerald Grass's metal eye patch and bandage. Suddenly, the supposedly asleep Emerald Grass opened her eyes and stared at the masked man. Emerald Grass looked down. She slid open the flesh on her arm, picked out a bloody wiretap device, and casually crushed it to pieces. She had not been asleep at all. As a pharmacist, how could she not have trained her drug resistance? Thus, tranquilizers were completely useless on her, but she had concealed that throughout all her years of imprisonment. What did they exchange me for? Emerald Grass asked calmly. It did not feel like she was in danger at all. It was like talking to an old friend even though she did not know the masked man at all. Some intelligence. The masked man looked at Emerald Grass with interest. Cheap. Emerald Grass frowned in dissatisfaction. Are you interested in my ability to make drugs? Whatever do you mean? The masked man asked playfully. You wouldn't be interested in any of my other abilities other than this? Emerald Grass said coldly. I was going to escape, but it looks like that would be suicide, Emerald Grass said honestly. Han Zio pulled off his mask and smiled. You're very wise. Han Zio had disguised himself for this meetup and taken a chopper over himself. He knew full well that Emerald Grass was not ordinary, and sending anyone else would have been a risk. What do you need me to do? Emerald Grass asked. I will tell you when we are there. Han Zio casually took out a device and scanned to see if there was any other wiretap on Emerald Grass's body, at the same time contemplating about how to have Emerald Grass work and stay in the sanctuary willingly. Although he had Emerald Grass under his control temporarily, he did not think that Emerald Grass would give up on escaping in the future if there was to be a chance, and he could not monitor her at all times. The helicopter lowered itself onto the parking spot. Having received notice long ago, Huang Yu came up to Han Zio, talking rapidly about the things that had happened when Han Zio was not around. Most of it was cumbersome matters, but Huang Yu had taken care of all of them very neatly. After looking at a large amount of Shadow Stalker Viper materials, Han Zio described the task then stared at Emerald Grass, waiting for her reply. Emerald Grass pondered for two minutes before nodding. 
shadow stalker vipers' brains, kidneys, gallbladders, mitral valves, and tailbones are all drug materials suitable for creating steroids and hormone drugs. Their eggs have a substance that aids in bone growth and metabolism and can be extracted to create very effective healing potions. Since you have so many monster eggs, I can try to cultivate a shadow stalker viper herd. Emerald Grass turned very professional when she talked about what she was good at, and she talked with more confidence, almost in a despising tone since she was so confident in her knowledge and skills of her field. What and what? Han Zhao did not hear clearly and was very confused. Emerald Grass rolled her eyes. Her expression was like telling Han Zio to leave these kinds of professional matters to the professionals, and Han Zio should not interfere since he had no knowledge of the field. Compared to the cold feeling that Emerald Grass gave off earlier, her expression was now livelier, like she had noticed that the situation she was in was not bad after all, which made her feel relieved and stopped putting on a disguise that rejected everyone with her coldness. Han Zio pointed at Emerald Grass and said, This is a pharmacist I've hired. Arrange a room for her. Huang Yu nodded. He brought Emerald Grass to an exquisite residence, then followed Han Zio's orders and gave her some information about the sanctuary. Tens of thousands of undead and humans are gathered in the sanctuary. I will not have to worry about the number of test subjects. There will be no infections, and there will not be another plague. How perfect. The sanctuary is also free and safe. Maybe staying here for a while won't be so bad. After all, I need time to digest the changes in the outside world. Han Zio leaned on the chair in the office and stared at the laptop on the table. It was the image of real-time surveillance of Emerald Grass's room. Emerald Grass had history and was not trustworthy, so Han Zio had backup plans. He had placed a few hidden cameras in the walls of the room and monitored everything Emerald Grass did, including what Emerald Grass was doing then. Han Zio squinted and thought. Her actions were very different before. She was calm and cold when she boarded the plane, but she showed her side of being a woman just now. It might be to create an illusion of her feeling safe to clear my doubts. He was doubtful for a reason. The emerald grass in his memories was a liberal who did not bow to any organization. She did things her own unique way and was unpredictable. At this time, Huang Yu walked in to report the situation. He took a few steps forward and saw the image on the laptop screen. He stopped the sentence, and the look in his eyes became weird. Seems like I discovered something extraordinary. Is? Is this what they call a peeper? Could this be the boss unknown hobby? Will I be killed? Wang Yu took a quick step backward and looked down at the floor, acting like he had not seen anything at all. Han Zio clearly knew that Wang Yu had misunderstood him. He shook his head but did not bother to explain. Let it be a misunderstanding then. The great mechanic Han has never cared about what others think. Don't tell anyone, Han Zio said. Wang Yu thought that Han Zio did not want anyone to know about his weird hobby, so he nodded rapidly. Emerald Grass was always very efficient. She started work almost immediately. Emerald Grass created many kinds of drugs with a very high quantity. Han Zio took the healing agents and steroids with the best quality, and allowed Emerald Grass to sell the rest of the drugs with lower quality to the players, which showed the multiple functionalities of the sanctuary to the players. There was always a high demand for drugs on the market. They were usually expensive to limit the players from using drugs excessively to win battles. Despite that, players still had a very high demand for these drugs. The appearance of Emerald Grass made a lot of players content. The message spread very quickly. All the players knew that there was a new NPC in the sanctuary who sold drugs, so a lot of players came and bought from Emerald Grass. The assistant whom Bennett had sent was indeed quite capable. At least, Han Zio had been satisfied with Huang Yu's efficiency till now, he took care of everything very well. The only bad thing about it was that Huang Yu was a man, not pleasing to the eye at all. As the saying goes, when there's something to do, the secretary will do it. When there's nothing to do, do the secretary. Han Zio had only heard of that saying. Unfortunately, he had never been part of it. Other than the assistant not being pleasant to the eyes, everything else in the sanctuary was going well. In the germinal organization's explosion-proof underground headquarters, the situation of the war was being presented to the leader. The high-ranked officials of the germinal organization were depressed. It was only the start of the war, yet the situation had been continuously heading toward their loss. The germinal organization indeed had no chance against the six nations on paper, but they still had certain strategies, which should have had a surprising impact on the ground war. Port of Home, Aviary, and Temefa. All of the thirteen ports are lost. The six nations have been sending their ground troops to the shores non-stop. From the north, Raylan and Theseus are attacking the Sunset Valley base and Black Tree base. If these bases are lost, we will lose part of the missile launchers. The other four nations are pushing in steadily, 
and the guarding division lead by Bark and Mu Haitian had been defeated. They are marching toward the important bases. The goal of the enemy is very clear. They are aiming at our bases equipped with missile launchers and anti-missile devices. They even know the detailed information of these bases. They definitely have very key intelligence of ours, the commander reported with sweat all over his head. It's zero, the leader said so calmly that it was almost scary. He was used to it. This result further proved his speculation of Han Zio having predicting abilities. Zero would always be the biggest threat to the organization as long as he was alive. The leader slammed the table with his gloved fist and said very coldly under his mask, we would only have a chance at victory if we kill Zero. Han Zio received the short-term reward for achieving the requirements of the Sanctuary main storyline. It was completed 61 days in advance, thus, he received a bonus 610% experience totaling to 568 million experience. This was the mission that had given him the most experience up till now. Then it called with a surprising tone. The early stages of construction for Sanctuary 3 is already completed. Han Zio laughed faintly and said, compliment me. Then it was speechless. After a long pause, he finally said, on a serious note, the progress of Sanctuary 3 is already ahead of Sanctuary 1. You have help from the Inhumans, so Sanctuary 3 might be the first to be completed. Keep this up. I have a lot of hope for Sanctuary 3. As you know, the wilderness has not been safe since the war broke out. Wanderers have migrated in mass. Our sanctuary can be of use right now, so try to bring as many people in as possible. Bennett said a little more before hanging up the call. He was also paying attention to the war, but he did not mention much about that topic. That was because the Dark Net was considered a neutral party. There was no need for them to join in this storm. However, he did not know Han Zio's plans. As the war breaks out, the German organization will have a hard time to even take care of themselves. I could pay them a visit. The thought flashed through Han Zio's mind. He had been waiting for this opportunity for a very long time. He had three goals. One was to receive direct progress of the mission and increase its completion percentage. Another goal was to save Aurora, free Hela who would be extremely strong in the future, and hopefully create a positive relationship with Hela. He had wanted to do this for a very long time and had only been waiting for a suitable opportunity. Now was no doubt the best time to save them. His confidence came from his strength that had improved once again. Five pieces of purple equipment lay in front of him. He had completed the class advancement mission in this month. With the first success he had, the rest had followed easily. Class advancement requirement. Build 5 purple equipment above level 60. Progress, 5 divided by 5. Class advancement succeed. Magnetic ring mechanic, also called basic mechanic, was where one graduated from being a trainee and pushed open the doors of the superhuman mechanic class, looking into the beautiful scenery behind these doors. The magnetic ring mechanic's specialty was utilizing the electromagnetic element energy into building machinery and increasing its affinity, thus improving its efficiency and quality. It was more superhuman-like. After becoming a magnetic ring mechanic, the energy of the mechanic class would be called and could be used in many aspects of the machinery. The newly awakened ability allowed the user to use energy to increase the power of machinery, similar to overload. But this was a continuous ability that causes very little damage to the machinery. It was a basic use of the mechanical force and also a prior requirement to many advanced abilities. LV-60 Class Advancement Mission Push one's limits during battle. Find and ascend the hierarchy of life. Mission requirements. Acquire 2,000 trial points. Trial points are gained through killing enemies. The stronger the enemies are, the more trial points. The harder the victory, the more the trial points. As expected, the version has no restriction on me because I'm not a player. Han Zio had expected this long ago, but he still could not hold back his happiness. On the coastline of the southern continent was Star Dragon Stone Port Base. Three heavy cargo planes were being checked before taking off. They had the mission of carrying important resources over the sea. In the small square beside the plane, hundreds of people in various clothing were either standing or sitting. They did not wear the uniform of Star Dragon military, but they shared the same aura that they were not to be messed with. These people were mercenaries belonging to different organizations. Mercenaries were like hounds searching for the smell of blood, taking part in wars to earn themselves a fortune. 
They were chatting among themselves at the moment. Most of them were undisciplined, rough men who were acting rowdily. The Star Dragon soldiers standing in their guarding positions on the side were annoyed by this behavior, but they were not allowed to scold these mercenaries as an order from above. Surrounded in a noisy environment, Kin Yuan crossed his arms and looked at the surroundings. The Blades, Goats, and Ice Sculpture Mercenary Organizations. Tisk tisk, seems like quite a number of people came, all wanting to earn a fortune during the war. A man in black clothes slowly approached and stopped at the edges of the team, causing everyone watching to avert their gaze. Chatter filled with shock soon rippled through the crowd. Why is someone like him here? Black Phantom can be said to represent the Dark Net. Is the Dark Net not on neutral ground anymore? Han Zio stood quietly unaffected and did not say a word. Black Phantom was a legend in the Dark Net. He immediately became the center of attention because they did not think that someone of this level would be acting together with them. They were of totally different levels. Just by standing there, Han Zio made these mercenaries shut their mouths in fear. The Star Dragon soldiers on the side were surprised and contented to see this. Finally, they could give their eyes a break. The plane was ready, and the Star Dragon soldiers announced that it was time to start boarding. The next moment, like everyone had made an agreement, they split open a path, and at the end of it was the confused Han Zio. Kin Yuan coughed and said respectfully, Please, please go first. Well, this is quite a good treatment. Oh my that's scary. Han Zio shook his head, carried his equipment bag, and boarded the plane before anyone else. He casually found a seat and sat down. The phone in his pocket started vibrating. Han Zio took it out, and it was a call from Bennett. He picked up the call, and the next moment, Bennett's scream almost broke his eardrums. Come back now. Han Zio moved the phone further away from his ear, before picking his ears with his pinky and saying unhappily, Lower your voice. Why didn't you discuss with me? Bennett said furiously. You represent the dark net. Joining the war means we have lost our neutral ground. The impact behind this. This is a private matter, Han Zio replied. Of course. How can it not be a private matter? Bennett yelled furiously. The germinal organization can't even take care of themselves anyway. Han Zio said. Isn't it good to make use of the opportunity? Neutral standings aren't important in the current situation anyway, so don't worry. Han Zio shook the phone rapidly and moved it further away while yelling. Hello. I'm on a plane. The signal is bad. You stop lying to. Han Zio hung up the phone. Bennett would definitely be unhappy with him doing this, so Han Zio felt somewhat apologetic. In the previous life toward the end of version 1.0, the six nations expressed their intentions to suppress the dark net. Now that the germinal organization had met their demise two years in advance and the six nations were not as damaged, they might suppress the dark net at an even earlier date. At this moment, a Star Dragon commander walked into the cabin, waved his laptop, and said, Eight hours till we arrive in Andrea. The destination is Migratory Birds Port on the south side. These are the basic situations of the southern battlefields and some missions. Take a look. Han Zio suddenly said, Give me a map of the entire battlefield with the Germinal Organization's territory and their basic layout. The commander agreed. The territory map and the layout of the enemy was not a secret. He had received orders to pay attention to Black Phantom and satisfy any of his reasonable needs. The reason that Star Dragon treated him so well had to do with Han Zio's identity. In gaming terms, it was because he had high enough relationship points and legendary points. Intelligence was also a reason that Han Zio had entered through the official channel. It was not easy to penetrate the battlefield. Han Zio realized that there were many small gaps in the germinal organization's deployment, which seemed like a chance for him to head straight into the headquarters. These gaps were not very obvious but were not too secretive. Feels weird. Han Zio rubbed his chins as his eyes twinkled. After getting off the plane, Han Zio had not stopped moving. He could feel the tense atmosphere in the battlefield as he passed through the battlefield. He occasionally saw refugees in ragged clothes staggering and retreating under the soldier's lead. These were the wanderers in Andrea. Their life was already tough enough, and the war made it even worse. Your Excellency Black Phantom, we hope you can lead us. Mercenaries respected the strong. Han Zio's position was undoubted. It was the safest to act in groups on the battlefield, and it was an instinct to follow those who were strong. Han Zio waved his hands, picked up his equipment, and left. Kin Yuan was stunned. He hurriedly yelled, Where are you going? That's the way to leaving the battlefield. Our mission is. Han Zio's voice came from far away. I'm not interested in that mission. I'm used to acting alone. Everyone helplessly exchanged looks. There was no need for him to join a team. He could just do things alone. A loud bang came from someone kicking open the doors downstairs. A group of people came in to search the building. 
With the sound of footsteps, a pair of people headed upstairs. Hanzio could see through the bullet holes in the walls that these people had IDs hovering above their heads. Unlucky, it's a group of players. What's your contribution points? 127. I have 95. There are no contribution points to killing refugees, how annoying. Both players of the Six Nations and Germanal organization received battlefield missions. Killing enemies would grant them contribution points. With a loud thud, the door was kicked open. The two players walked in and saw Han Zio in the corner. FCK, another refugee. One of them raised the gun immediately and prepared to fire. His attitude was like the person before him was equal to an ant. Whoosh. A few blades flew out near the ground and slashed through the two players' necks in a flash. Blood shot out as they turned into white light and disappeared. They were killed in an instant. These players were at around LV-20 and had about 300 HP. With Han Zio's abilities and talents, the damage of his purple compounded magnetic chain split blades was between 45 and 112, but he could deal about three times what was shown on the interface. Then, Han Zio changed to another face and left the building with a low profile. He hid in the ruins and avoided the germinal organization troops before finding a new house and observing the situation. Flashes of white light appeared one after another. These players revived at the germinal organization battlefield revival point. They still had not realized what had happened, and their faces were filled with confusion. How did I die? Was there a bug? They looked at the combat information on their interfaces hastily. Has dealt 275 damage to you. Has dealt 267 damage to you. You were killed by. The players were all confused. A string of bullets was being fired at a super soldier of the germinal organization, hitting his exoskeleton. These monsters are too tough. Super soldiers were not as strong as normal superhumans, but the germinal organization had improved this technology through many experiments and were able to mass produce the super soldiers. It was quite a headache in the battlefield for the six nations. Fang Yun and his team worked together and defeated this super soldier very quickly. However, the sound of battle attracted other superhumans of the germinal organization, and a siege battle started. It was bloody and merciless. Fang Yun's team members fell one after another. Fang Yun was besieged by the super soldiers. He was wounded all everywhere, and blood spilled out of his mouth as he was moving. Two germinal organization superhumans caught up. They rubbed their fists and walked toward Fang Yun with a ferocious smile on their faces. Fang Yun clenched his teeth. These two people were the ones who had killed his team member earlier. They walked closer and closer, and when they were only 10 meters away, a shadow appeared behind them. The person was dressed like a refugee. What the? Blades hovered beside the refugee. With a flash of light, they penetrated these two from behind and went back and forth several times within a blink of an eye. The faces of these two people froze. More than ten wounds appeared on their bodies the next second, and blood shot out like a fountain. Fang Yun was completely shocked. Two germinal organization superhumans had been killed instantly by a refugee. Attention, the enemy's backup has arrived. There are superhumans from Division 13. The enemies are too strong, fall back immediately. Han Zio's eyes twinkled. This was just the right situation for him to infiltrate. The germinal organization superhuman saw Han Zio and yelled, Karius, quickly come over and help. The unlucky guy that Han Zio had changed into was called Karius. This yell also made the Star Dragon people notice Han Zio and fired at him. Hello pugilist. Han Zio hooked his fingers. Compounded magnetic chain split blades flew out low on the ground and immediately slashed open the flesh of this pugilist. He fell onto the ground the next moment while he was still charging toward Han Zio. Han Zio bolted over and sent him flying with a kick. The germinal organization soldier that had called Han Zio's name was stunned. Since when was Karius so strong? Just as he wanted to call Han Zio for help, he saw that Han Zio had knocked over the people obstructing the way and hopped into a car immediately escaping. The people of the germinal organization were stunned. Then they realized what had happened and all hastily jumped up the cars to escape. They were in an extremely disadvantageous position anyway. As soon as someone started something like this, there would be people that followed. After infiltrating the camp, Han Zio collected intelligence incautiously. His plan was to get closer to the headquarters by continuously changing his identity. The most direct targets were those troops that headed in the direction of the headquarters. Han Zio was asking around until night fell, when he found out that a supply convoy had transported a large number of munitions from a resource warehouse nearer to the headquarters. That convoy would be returning in 20 minutes. Han Zio located one of the drivers, changed his face, 
and lured him out. He cracked the driver's neck when they were alone and then changed into his face and clothes. It was troublesome to get rid of the body, so Hanzio found a very creative and not bloody way, which was to find a player and give him the mission to get rid of the body. Although he set his identity to be unknown in the mission, the players would not care at all. The mission was accepted immediately. Convenient, Hanzio thought. He had a new idea. The players could be of help for his infiltration. Although the Germanal organization players' loyalty was fixed, they still had the freedom to accept missions, and the Germanal organization did not know that. Hanzio received an order very soon after he disguised himself as a driver. The GPS in the car showed the route, so Hanzio simply followed the convoy and arrived at the resources warehouse half a day later. He then used the same method to gain more intelligence. After two days, Hanzio finally arrived at a base near the headquarters after changing his identity many times. In the underground headquarters of Germinal Organization, the leader was looking at the tactical map in silence. The map was marked with red and blue areas. Red was the Six Nations forces, and blue was theirs. The blue was surrounded by red and was only getting smaller with time. This was the situation for the Germinal Organization. Although Destiny's child claimed that Zero would come to find them, the leader had to take care of some details. He purposely left some gaps in the deployment on the battlefield. Zero might take these routes if he wanted to infiltrate the headquarters, but the intel from the hidden scouts disappointed him again and again. There was no one who had infiltrated through those gaps. The method Han Zio used to infiltrate was unnoticed by the leader. The longer the leader waited, the more impatient he grew. The ability to foresee that Zero possessed was like a blade hanging on the organization's head, and their actions were very restricted. Still not here. The leader had asked the scouts as usual, but the results were disappointed once again. He started to doubt if Destiny's child's claim had failed this time, because he really did not understand why Zero had to come to the headquarters. He could not figure out what Han Zio's goal was. He never would have thought that Han Zio's target was Aurora. That was completely unexpected. After changing his identity many times, he finally got an identity that could get him into the headquarters. In order to become a guard, Hanzio had to patiently wait for a few days, and it went without saying what happened to the original owner of this identity. Hanzio had never been one to have mercy in these times. The security measures had to be turned off through the central computer before he could save anyone in the headquarters, and he also had to access the central computer for another goal he had. Therefore, he needed a hostage that had the authority to operate the central computer. Fortunately, Hanzio had kept someone in mind since very long ago. Cyberloss Hanzio knew about Cyberloss in his previous life. A high-rank researcher of the Germinal organization. Research fanatic. Known by the players because he was the one in charge of the research that turned Aurora into Aurora Jam. To him, he could only do more experiments if he was alive, so he could betray any organization without any hesitation. There was a small problem, however, the headquarters were enormous, and Hanzio had no idea where Cyberloss was at the moment. At this time, a player with a hovering ID able his head walked past, so Hanzio had an idea. Hey there, I have a small matter that I need your help with. As he spoke, he set a mission and gave it out. The mission requirement was to find Cyberloss location. He wrote in the mission introduction that he had something urgent to report as if he really did. Since the players would not normally doubt the mission introduction, they would not suspect anything. Electrolux was pleasantly surprised. It was the first time that he had experienced a mission coming directly to him. Furthermore, the reward was quite rich, so he was tempted. Finding Cyberloss was very easy. He could only be in the lab. Cyberloss spent most of his time in the headquarters, so he was not very cautious and also did not have any guards following him. Hanzio turned around and turned his back on Cyberloss, acting like he was arranging the data. He bent his finger. A blade hovered very close to the ground and flew into Cyberloss' coat, touching against his heart. Cyberloss felt something cold near his chest. He hastily reached out his hands to his chest and felt a piece of thin metal. Shocked, he immediately wanted to unbutton his collar to check. It was at this moment that he heard a clear whisper despite the noisy surroundings. Quiet, don't move, don't yell, or this piece of blade will slice open your heart. Now, act like nothing happened and listen to my orders. You don't listen, you die, you trigger the alarm, you also die. Cyberloss looked around, everyone looked like enemy to him. He said softly, calm down, what do you want me to do? He did not dare fight back because he was worried for his life. Leave the lab, act normal. Okay, don't do anything to me. Cyberloss took a few deep breaths and said loudly, You guys continue the experiment. I have something to attend to. After he finished saying that, he walked to the door without raising the other researcher's suspicion. 
Han Zio paused for a while and followed behind Cyberloss. The two came to the corridor. Bring me to the central computer. I need your authorization. Don't try to pull of any tricks. I can penetrate your heart in less than 0.1 second if anything abnormal happens. I won't, Cyberloss said as he felt the coldness on his chest. Then he calmed his mind and lead the way. He was not a soldier. His life was more important than anything to him. He knew that he had no choice but to compromise, so he was not willing to take the risk of triggering the alarm. After entering an empty corridor, Cyberloss looked carefully at Han Zio's face and suddenly said softly, I see you had a surgery on your face, Zero. Han Zio was shocked. How did he figure out my identity? In order to catch you, the leader has planted an inescapable trap. Countless executive officers are on standby, ready to act anytime, and here you are as expected. Han Zio was perplexed at the time, but he hastily calmed himself down. Then he noticed something wrong. If the leader really knew his goal, he could not have snuck in this easily. That meant that the leader had limited knowledge and did not even know he had the ability to infiltrate through changing his face, which explained why there were no preventive measures. Han Zio instantaneously thought of the gap between the deployment layout of the germinal organization and was now sure that it was a trap. Han Zio suppressed his killing intent and said in a low voice, Tell me everything you know. I will consider letting you live. This is all the prediction of Destiny's child. Destiny's child. Han Zio frowned. He had never heard of such a person in the germinal organization. Destiny's child's ability might be foreseeing the future. It might also be deciding the future. We are unsure as well. He said you will walk into the trap yourself. There is someone like that hidden in the germinal organization. Han Zio was shocked. There was no information about this person in his previous life. It seemed like this was the germinal organization's deepest secret. If Destiny's child could influence the future, did that mean his thought of saving Aurora could have been forced upon him? Suddenly, he felt a strong need to kill Destiny's child. The mind was one's palace. Anyone would be extremely furious if it was invaded. Many abilities could influence the mind. Psychic, magic, a spur, and there were even similar natural phenomenon in the universe. However, after some pondering, Han Zio felt this guess was way too unbelievable because he already had thought about saving Aurora when he first saw Gila more than one year ago. Furthermore, saving Aurora was not the only motive he had for infiltrating the Germinal Organization headquarters. There had to be limitations to Destiny's child's abilities, or at least it had a limited effect on him. However, he did come to Germinal Organization headquarters alone as predicted, and that had him relieved and worried at the same time. He finally understood how dreadful it was to have an enemy that might be able to predict the future. Suddenly, he felt the leader's pain. I have made the germinal organization suffer so much. The leader probably wants to skin me alive. The central computer room was located at the core area of the headquarters. It stored a large amount of confidential information. Cyberloss had the necessary authority, so he turned off the defense measures and brought Han Zio into the central computer room. Rows of large hard drives were placed neatly like a bookshelf. Indicator lights flashed continuously, and at the end of the central computer room was the monitor and the controls. Cyberloss turned on the central computer, keyed in the password, then identified his fingerprint and scanned his retinas. There was actually a secret alarm measure in this step, where one set of passwords would activate the alarm in the event that a high-ranked official was threatened. However, Cyberloss did not plan to do such thing for the sake of his own safety. He believed that Han Zio could kill him easily before being caught, and he did not want to take the risk. Thus, this alarm measure was useless to him. Cyberloss was lawless and extremely daring when doing experiments, but when something concerned his life, he was a total coward. What do you want to see? Cyberloss asked. Full map of the headquarters, Han Zio said. Cyberloss controlled the computer, and the construction map of the headquarters showed up on the screen. Han Zio took out Viper's helmet from his equipment bag, took a photo of the map, and stored it into the database to create a 3D model automatically. At the same time, he was also memorizing the map, quickly locating where Aurora was imprisoned. Thinking about the Destiny's Child mentioned earlier, Han Zio was a little tempted to see what that was about. But Cyberloss said that only the leader had the authority to open the gate toward the Destiny's Child. Thus, Han Zio had to let go of that idea. Open your confidential intelligence database, Han Zio said. Cyberloss did as he was told. The secrets were laid out right in front of Han Zio. Gathering this intelligence was the other reason he had come to the Germinal Organization headquarters. Han Zio saw the exoskeleton structure of the super soldiers. It did indeed use the technology from the light mechanical arm he once had left behind. 
They were basically just using his leftovers. Han Zio recorded all the intelligence, especially the detailed information regarding the Hand of Death system. Giving all this to the Six Nations could create incomparable advantages for them and eliminate the Germinal Organization's last resort. Open the knowledge database, Han Zio said. Class advancement knowledge of pugilist, esper, and mechanic showed up on the screen. Han Zio let out a long exhale upon seeing that class knowledge. He was excited deep down. He could finally gain new class advancement knowledge after so many months. The mechanic class advancement knowledge the germinal organization had was of the control branch. Mechanic class advancement knowledge detected. Spend two potential points to learn. Confirm. Learning in progress. Do not cancel. Han Zio closed his eyes and felt the new knowledge appeared in his mind like the name suggested, was an important technology related to biological machinery. By reading the nerve signal from a life form, machinery could be controlled with one's mind, increasing the reaction speed several levels. Having new advanced class knowledge meant that the number of possible knowledge combinations increased, and he could fuse many more blueprints. It was a direct benefit to him. Finally, I have the second class advancement knowledge after the one from Stardragon about a year ago. Cyberloss was watching from the side all the time. Suddenly, he felt a chill and asked while shivering, You, are you an inhuman? Through their research, the organizations had realized that the inhuman had the ability to learn things very quickly, and Han Zio's actions earlier were a little suspicious, so Cyberloss suddenly thought of this possibility. Han Zio had an evil idea. He laughed and misleadingly said, What do you think? Cyberloss suddenly felt a chill around his hands and feet. The archenemy of the organization was an undead inhuman, then what was the point of opposing him? SHT. What the hell? Damn it. But, you appeared much earlier than the inhumans. Before Cyberloss finished his sentence, he became extremely shocked and looked at Han Zio as if he was looking at a ghost. Is Zero actually the first inhuman? Was the inhuman phenomenon actually spread by Zero and his ability? Not bothering about Cyberloss, whose thoughts diverged further and further from the truth, Han Zio checked the intelligence and made sure it was correct before asking, is there a self-destruction program in your central computer? Who would be so stupid to set a self-destruction function in the headquarters? That's crazy. Cyberloss wiped away his sweat. Viper completed the 3D map at that moment, so everything was ready. Han Zio pulled Cyberloss up and yelled, Turn off all the defense measures of Area of 4. Freeze all the surveillance cameras. Cyberloss did as he was told hastily. Then it occurred to him. Area of 4, isn't that where the little girl with the vital power ability is imprisoned? What do you want to do? I want that little girl. Let's go. Cyberloss was stunned. He could understand why Han Zio wanted the intel. But Aurora was the organization's top secret. Han Zio had not looked into details of the intelligence he just received, so it was like he knew it all along. Was the reason that Han Zio chose him to be the hostage also because he knew that he would cooperate? Cyberloss felt a chill up his spine. The feeling of being completely exposed was a fear that deeply penetrated into his bones, devouring his mind. The duo arrived at the gate, and the guards stopped them. Open the gate. Cyberloss tried to be as calm as possible. Cyberloss, I didn't receive any authorization. The guard said with confusion. Just a routine blood draw. But someone is already drawing the blood. The guard said hesitantly. However, when they saw that Cyberloss was losing his patience, they still opened the gate. Walking into the room, Han Zio finally saw Aurora. She was petite and skinny. Her skin was the kind of pale that had not been under the sun for years. She was locked in the room with glass walls, like an animal in a zoo. The little girl was cowering in the corner and hugging her knees. She looked at the people in white coats outside with fear. These people were pushing a small trolley full of tools and preparing for the blood draw. Aurora vividly remembered the pain of the blood draw, and it was going to happen again today. She bit her lips and hoped that the waiting could last forever. However, she knew that these people would enter the room sooner or later and insert a needle into her blood vessels and bones while she helplessly watched her life force turn into a red torrent and leave her body in a tube. Aurora had fantasized that her older sister would save her from this fate, but she knew that was too much to ask. She did not want her sister to be in danger just to save her, so all she could do was look happy and optimistic in front of Gila. Only then would Gila not feel even worse and feel less stressed. At this time, she saw the gate open once again. Two people walked in. Then she could only see a few white lights flashing before she saw the people in white coat and the guards fall onto the floor with blood spurting out from their bodies. Aurora blinked with confusion. She stared blankly as the glass wall that stood between her and freedom was opened easily. A ferocious-looking weird uncle walked in and reached out toward her. I'm here to save you, follow me. 
Aurora froze in place. She had fantasized and dreamed of this moment, but when freedom finally came, she was lost. Aurora looked at the hands that reached out for her before raising her head to look into Han Zio's eyes. Why are you here to save me? She asked timidly. Han Zio pondered and said, You can take it as I'm just a warm-hearted person. Who are you? Aurora turned her head sideways. You can call me Zero, Han Zio said casually. Aurora's wet and large eyes were filled with surprise. So, your uncle Zero. Han Zio squinted his eyes. Being called uncle made him felt like he was abducting a little girl. At that moment, Han Zio realized something. Wait a minute, how do you know me? My elder sister told me about your story. That's weird, what did Hila mention me for? Han Zio thought. This little girl seemed to be rather friendly toward him, which was really weird since they should be enemies. He wondered what Hila had told her. Aurora stood up wobbly, put her hand in Han Zio's hand, and said, Thank you for saving me. Please bring me away. Han Zio was interested. Aren't you afraid that I will use you like the germinal organization? My older sister said, No matter how dangerous the future is, it will be better than now. His understanding of Aurora was only limited to the rumors in his previous life. There had been a side mission to investigate the source of the drug that Aurora was made into, and through that, the players came to know about Aurora. Therefore, he did not know Aurora's personality, and he did not expect things to go so smoothly. There would be plenty of opportunities to improve their relationship later on. He realized that the small body size of Aurora would attract too much attention even with a disguise. He thought for a moment and took out an empty single shoulder equipment bag. Get in. Aurora did as she was told and climbed into the bag. As the zip closed, her vision became dark. She could only feel herself being lifted and moved. Sister, Aurora cowered in the bag, closed her hands in front of her chest, and prayed. The three of them quickly passed various levels and headed toward the underground tunnel. At the same time, the leader, who was listening to the battlefield analysis, suddenly took out his phone. The central computer was browsed by cyber loss. A lot of confidential information was gone through. The leader narrowed his eyes and raised suspicion. He said to the assistant, find cyber loss location and show the surveillance camera footage on my laptop. Then, the leader operated his laptop and entered the central computer system through a backdoor command. He looked at the browsing history and immediately noticed that Cyberloss had turned off all the defensive measures. The surveillance camera footage could be seen, too. Cyberloss had entered the central computer room with another person. The leader's eyes became sharp and cold. He was immediately able to deduct that Cyberloss was under duress, and this stranger was most likely zero. At a lounge in the underground headquarters, a group of executive officers played poker out of boredom. It's so damn boring to stand by every day. How I wish to go to the battlefield, someone lamented. All of a sudden, Gila opened her eyes and turned her head in a specific direction. The coldness on her face was gone, replaced by shock and rage in her eyes. The life mark that she had left on Aurora moved. These executive officers suddenly received orders from their superiors, and before it was finished, they heard a loud blast. As they looked up, they saw that the gate was shattered. Gila had already turned into a high-speed, dark red shadow and disappeared at the end of the corridor something's wrong. As they were heading toward the gate of the underground tunnel, Han Zio frowned, looked around, and said, the atmosphere doesn't feel right. There are fewer people along the way. I have a sense for danger. Did you trigger the alarm? As he finished speaking, Han Zio looked at Cyberloss with a piercing look in his eyes. Cyberloss was shocked and denied it immediately. No, I definitely didn't do it. Maybe the leader noticed something abnormal. I don't have as much authorization as the leader, so him noticing my browsing history really has nothing to do with me. Han Zio tightened his grip on the equipment bag and said in a low voice, let's go quickly. At this time, five levels higher, the leader was heading to this direction with a laptop in his hand. The surveillance camera feedback was displayed on the screen. He laughed coldly and said, so, you have started to suspect it. By the time you reach the underground tunnel, the ambush that I set up will be completed as well. Seeing that Han Zio was like an insect that had sunk deeper and deeper into the spider web, the leader seemed to have seen the light of success. However, the next moment, he saw from the surveillance camera a flash of dark red light shooting straight toward Han Zio. Hila had almost gone haywire. Her red eyes were staring straight at Han Zio with rage. It was not because she recognized Han Zio, it was because she felt the life mark on Aurora. Her younger sister was hidden and cowered in the equipment bag that this person was carrying. Put her down. Her seeing a stranger taking her younger sister away in a bag was like a parent seeing the child being carried away by a stranger. There was no way to stay calm in such a situation. Rage consumed her senses, and she could not think rationally anymore. 
Furthermore, her younger sister was very special to her. Aurora was almost like her spiritual sustenance, and that made things even worse. This woman got stronger again. Hanzaya was shocked. Hila's superhuman abilities could inflict both physical and psychological damage, and this was already so strong despite only being the physical damage. This meant that the main psychological damage would only be stronger. It was probably because she was attacking in a rage state. The damage enhancement could almost match up to his. Despite being rather tanky, Hanzaya was not interested in getting hit. He moved to the side and dodged again. With a thought in his mind, Hanzayo destroyed two surveillance cameras with two shots and yelled, Hila, I'm here to save your younger sister. You're attacking the wrong person, you stupid woman. Before he finished, Hila already crashed toward him and reached out to grab the bag without listening to anything he said. Being speechless, Hanzayo let go of the bag. Hila hurriedly placed the bag on the floor, opened the zip, and looked Aurora in her eyes. Sister, Aurora's voice was filled with surprise. Are you okay? Hila immediately checked over Aurora's body. Seeing that she was not hurt, Hila was relieved. Then she remembered there was still an enemy present. He stood up in a flash and stood in front of Aurora, her face alert and looking like she was ready to fight any time. Sis, you misunderstood. That uncle is here to save me. I don't know him at all. Hila was still cautious. He said he's Uncle Zero. Hila was stunned. She could not believe it. Zero, it's me. Hanzayo did not hide anymore. The alarms all across the bases were ringing. He knew that he was exposed. When Hila suddenly appeared, he already knew that things were not pleasant. With how much Hila cared for Aurora, she would definitely go all out straight away. How can it be you? Hila could not believe it. The dark red smoke moved with her emotions. Why did Zero come to save Aurora? There should be no connection between them. She could not figure out Han Zio's motive at all. Her power gathered in her hands, but she did not engage. Do you want your younger sister to continue being controlled by the organization? Right now is the best chance to escape, Han Zio said in a low voice. His motive of saving Aurora was for Hila, and Hila was right in front of him now. Naturally, he would not let the chance slip by. The alarm was ringing loudly. Hila was hesitating despite the fact that she hardly ever hesitated at all. She really wanted to just take Aurora and escape like this, but the alarm in the base was already triggered. She knew the power gathered in the headquarter more than Han Zio did. There was too little chance to escape, and she did not want Aurora to take the risk. If only I didn't attack just now. This thought of regret appeared and disappeared within an instant. At this moment, Aurora pulled on Hila's shirt. Sis, bring me away. Hila's expression tightened. She looked down and saw Aurora's hopeful face. The words of rejection were stuck in her throat. How can she put her younger sister back in a situation worse than death? Thinking of the things that Aurora went through all this time, Hila felt like her heart was being squeezed and rubbed. At least the most difficult part was already completed. Her younger sister had already left that prison cell, and this was what she had been dreaming of. At this moment, Hila's became firm. She touched Aurora's head gently and thought to herself, If it fails, I will die with you. Hila raised her head, looked at Han Zio with mixed feelings, and said, Follow me. She had never expected to fight side by side with Han Zio. With more help, there was a bigger chance to escape. Zero had snuck in without anyone noticing, so he could not be too weak. Moron, who told her to engage. The leader was furious. Han Zio changed his route, so his plan was disrupted. Han Zio was now more cautious, and the leader's siege had not yet fully formed. As the cameras were destroyed, the leader did not see the conversation between Han Zio and Hila. He merely thought that they had already started fighting. All executive officers and soldiers, full engagement. I want Zero to die here, the leader yelled through the walkie-talkie. The high-caliber berserk eagles shot hot flames out of the muzzles. The cameras on the way were destroyed one after another. Now that Hila was here, was there any reason to keep this old man around? They were not going through the underground tunnel, so Cyberloss was of no use anymore. Cyberloss shivered. Do, don't do this. You need my authorization. He's exposed. His authority is frozen. There's no point keeping him. Hila had an indifferent look. Cyberloss was a superior that was in charge of the experiments on her younger sister, so her hatred for him was deep in her bones. She raised her arms and was going to kill Cyberloss. At this time, a hand grabbed onto her arm. Han Zio shook his head toward her. Don't kill him. We might need him alive, Han Zio said. Then he slapped Cyberloss unconscious. Han Zio had misled him in many ways, so he could make Cyberloss mislead the leader as well. What's your plan? Hila was not used to Zero being her teammate yet. She kept silent for a while then replied, I know a hidden path that can help us escape the headquarters, but it is very far, four floors down. 
the cameras were destroyed, so the surveillance images became black one after another. He could only know the situation through the report from his headphones. Executive officers, super soldiers, and inhuman teams are now heading that way to surround him. And there's also Gila stalling Zero. There's no chance for him to escape, the leader thought. This time, a voice of an executive officer came out of the headphones, filled with murderous intent. I have met the target, engaging. The leader was excited. He yelled, no need to catch him alive, kill him right away. However, the next moment, high-pitched noise exploded from the headphone that hurt the leader's eardrums. Screams came out of the headphones. It was from the executive officer that was just reporting the situation. The leader was stunned. It's been less than 10 seconds. That executive officer was not weaker than Pan Quang at all. What accident happened? He felt an unpleasant intuition. Eight seconds earlier. Careful, he's an executive officer. Strength enhancing superhuman ability, you. Hila warned hastily as a thick cloud gathered in her hand. As soon as Han Zio was going to be defeated, she was going to back up immediately. Han Zio struck before Hila finished her sentence. With a swing of a hand, two sonic bombs flew out. The high pitch noise gave the male executive officer a shock and slowed down his action for an instant. All Han Zio needed was this instant. Activating both the mini-maneuvering equipment and the electromagnetic hover boots, he approached the enemy like a ghost. Surging mechanical force, lethal critical hits, all the damage-enhancing active abilities were activated one after another. Although there was no, the power was still horrifying. With a spin of both his palms, a blue light shone from the thermo-electrical incisor gloves and pressed onto the male executive officer's chest. On the other side, Hila was lowering her stiffed hand. This executive officer had been killed instantly before she had even finished her sentence. There was completely no need for her help. Hila was completely stunned. Even she did not have the confidence to do it so fast. How is Zero this strong? Is this a fake? At the same time, the leader was stunned by this problem, too. He realized he had misinterpreted Han Zio's strength. One mistake could affect the entire plan. Luckily, the leader knew that Zero could not be judged with common sense after many failures, so he had overestimated Zero's ability as much as he could, and many people were waiting in ambush. However, seeing what was happening now, not only was it not a waste, but there might not even be enough. Since his subordinates could not win, he would kill Zero himself. Stop him, wait for me, the leader said coldly. In less than a year, there was no way Zero's strength could have reached his level. He was someone who stood at the top of Planet Aquamarine. If Han Zio knew what the leader was thinking of, he definitely would have laughed. What a coincidence, I am, too. The players rushed up in waves while kicking and screaming only to disintegrate into light particles the next second. Han Zio figured that if it continued for a bit longer, he could probably use up all of the players' weekly resurrection, which could help cure their gaming addiction and have them go complete their homework instead. As the players were not much of a threat to him at all, Han Zio did not want to bother with talking sense into them. At this point, players could not change sides yet anyway. Soon enough, the players became more hesitant and stopped rushing in masses with their previous fervor. Although players did not fear death, they did not want to throw away their lives for no reason. They realized that the mission reward was only something they can covet but could not even come close to touching. For a while now, Electrolux had been witnessing one germinal director after another, all with fatally dangerous tags on them, rushing up to the also fatally dangerous Han Zio, only to be smacked all over the place like wet cabbage. Electrolux was so scared that he was about to suffer liver problems just from watching. Bolsh T, why do they even have the same tack? This is all a scam, even more fatal than fatally dangerous. Why not just say that you're here to harvest lives? The players could not stop lamenting at the unfairness of it all. The executive officers in the headquarters were by no means weak, but it was a shame that they are pitted against Han Zio. Unless they were at least LV-50, there was not even a tiny bit of chance that they could hurt him. Hila did not even need to help a single time along the way, so she focused on protecting Aurora. Han Zio was simply unstoppable. However, Hila realized that the germinal forces did not know about her betrayal. Instead, some were even shouting at her for help against this monster of an enemy. The cameras along the way were blown up by Han Zio, and the germinal leader did not know that Han Zio and Hila had teamed up. Hila realized that this was a huge advantage. As Hila looked at Han Zio's figure amid the intense battle, she thought, could it be that this was all part of his plan? Did he not have me help for this purpose? Bang! And another director fell beside his feet. Han Zio wiped away the blood on his face and could finally take in a deep breath. 
he was not exactly unscathed. Some directors had weird powers that could threaten him, but both his defense and HP were very high, so the damage was hardly worth mentioning. Only the last two levels left, said Han Zio. Be careful, these are only the vanguard. The main force has yet to arrive. Hila's face was tense as she knew how much manpower the leader had allocated to the headquarters. Even if Han Zio did far exceed her expectations with his combat strength, he could not possibly take on a whole army. In that moment, Hila thought of a plan that would basically guarantee her and her sister's escape but would put Han Zio in significant danger. She pursed her lips together finally decided before speaking out. I have an idea. Han Zio immediately replied. Split up, and I will be the bait. Hila's eyes were then wide open, and her face was full of shock. How did you know? I guessed, Han Zio said nonchalantly. From the moment Hila appeared, he had already started coming up with this vague plan, which was why he focused on destroying all the cameras. It was to ensure that Hila was not considered a traitor, at least not yet, in the eyes of Germinal. Hila could just use her position as a high-level director to escape easily, while Han Zio could pull all the attention elsewhere. Tell me the where the secret passage is, and I will catch up with you after I have diverted their attention. Hila was shocked. They had no reason to trust each other, yet Han Zio was giving the choice to her. She could not understand where his trust came from. Is he not afraid that I will give him the false directions? However, this dark thought started to take from inside her mind and would not go away. Give him the wrong location. Let him be cornered by Germinal and buy even more time. It was as if this voice in her mind was packed with magic, constantly causing her to waver. For Aurora, I will do everything it takes to keep her out of harm's way. Room H418. The fourth brick on the floor from the left is the secret passage's entrance. Got it. Han Zio laughed, seemingly not doubting her words at all as he gently patted the bag with Aurora. Go. Hila took one last look Han Zio as she tried to etch his image into her memories before she turned and left with hurried strides, afraid of wasting even a single second. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.